Good morning, everybody. Louder. Good morning, everybody. That's better. Thank you for being so energetic. I hope you had your good coffee this morning. So before we even get into what's going on with today's program, and I'm going to be very brief about this, we do want to thank, though, our sponsors of this program. And we have, as you can see on the big screens, we have EMD Serono, we have Malincrot, Genentech, and Celgene. And so I hope that you all appreciate, like me, for what they are able to do for us. All right? Again, and I say this from program to program to program, the pharmaceutical industry needs organizations such as MS Views and News to provide these educational programs just so that you learn more about all the different aspects about multiple sclerosis. So again, I am very glad that they're here doing this. And I did already mention the live stream and I'm gr glad about that and I do want to thank, thank our audience out there. So whoever you are, thank you for being here. Awesome. Jeff Siegel is a recipient of the 2007 National Strength and Conditioning Association Personal Trainer of the Year Award. Yay, Jeff! <laughs> Jeffrey has written articles for numerous MS publications in addition to others such as Shape Magazine. He's the owner of Balanced Personal Training since 2004. He's also a national motivational and educational speaker and for many of you in this audience, you'll be glad to know that he's a graduate of Florida State University. Yeah, I knew I'm gonna hear a mixed roars or boos or whatever. All right, Jeff's also a person living with multiple sclerosis since 1998. And let's welcome Jeff Siegel. Hello. I'm here to talk about exercise, wellness, nutrition, um, if you were in the other room, you saw there was a lot of wellness tables, people showing you things that are actually helpful if you do them. Fit Me Food was great. That's what I've been talking about for years, that my diet is my diet. I own it. You can't have it. It works for me. It's individualized for me. That's how my workout is. If you have a personal trainer, they should be giving you an individualized workout for you. It shouldn't be a cookie cutter program and it shouldn't be something that's been put together for a group of people to do together if you want to meet your individual needs. So with that being said, how many people in here actually think about the things they should be doing more than the things that they're actually doing? Raise your hand. Okay, now raise the other hand. Now just move your arms. All right, now flap. No, no there's people next to you. It's important to do more than sit in a crowd and watch someone speak and listen to the physicians tell you the things that you should and shouldn't be doing. You have to live it. You have to act it. You have to, it has to be part of your life. And if you think that you don't have enough time to exercise, you're all screwed up, I'm telling you. <laughs> because your priorities are wrong. They shouldn't be that way because exercise, nutrition, your support system, your mental health, uh, you're, the way you are emotionally, these make up who you are. That defines you. Uh, don't let people define you by the things you can't do. When there's several things that you can do that would have a much bigger impact on your life and the people's lives around you. That's what exercise brings to the table. Why wouldn't you want to do it? Because it has the word exercise involved. How many of you would play if it was called play? I say this all over the country. If we just were able to go out and play, we'd all be in shape. And I'm being repetitious in saying this, but as children, how many of you could not keep up with the rest of the people in the group because you were too tired if you did it every day? I don't see any hands raised right now because people play as children and they condition with the other children and they're all on the same page, getting better and better and better, and then someone comes into the neighborhood that's new and they can't keep up, it's really quick to get back into it, or for them to get involved. So imagine what you're doing is playing. That's what I do for a living, is I play. And it feels great, and it feels great to watch other people succeed. And if you think exercise isn't something that you're gonna uh, benefit from, besides being incorrect, you're going to look better to other people, not just physically, but your emotional appearance. People that smile, people that say to another person, guess what, I started playing, <laughs> I started exercising. 
and I feel a lot better with this, that, and the other. It just, things just start to click. Your body learns, you know, from right from wrong, not just from reading. Your body doesn't learn from reading. You have to put that into action. Neuroplasticity is something that your brain does throughout your life. It evolves. You know, it changes with times. It changes with what it's, uh, what's being put in front of it. Exercise is something that enhances that. So with the benefits of exercise being building bone mass, we just talked about um, osteoporosis being an issue, uh, helping you with your triglycerides, your blood sugar, all these other things that, that are maintained by exercise and diet and the way you live your life. By doing all that stuff, it's giving you that much more time to talk to your neurologist about what? What do you go to your neurologist about for? Because you have MS, right? Would you rather talk to them about MS and how to make MS better for you and, and your life uh, work better with MS? Or would you rather talk to your doctor about how diabetes is going to hurt your MS? Or how about your heart condition or your future heart surgery that you're going to have? How's that going to affect MS? Well, these are all prevented, prevented, um, preventative things that you can do. These are illnesses that you do not have to get. MS we're stuck with. You know, if you have it, you got it. I'm here to teach you how to live with it. And I'm going to live and die with it. That's what I, I you know, if, if there's a cure, great. I have a feeling they're going to cure the common cold before they cure MS. Just my thoughts. I have a feeling they may cure some other disease. But how many diseases are cured? When I realized this is when I said, you know what? This is the time to learn to live with it. I'm not, a, I'm not looking for a cure. I don't think most of you are either, unless you've got a lab at home. And doing these exercises allows you to be able to do the things that you thought at one point you can't do. Now, I want to get some volunteers up here. And I'd like to start out with, uh, with someone who doesn't have MS. Where? Here? OK. Uh, come over this way. You're going to have to, uh, can you do cartwheels and jumps? No, the stairs right here. You can make it. OK. Ah, oh, you see, he's been practicing. All right. <laughs> how, are you, how are you? I'm fine. OK, are you OK being recorded? Sure, okay. I agree. OK, what I want you to do is look out there. You can't really see too many people's faces because these lights are bright, right? So just pretend you're looking at everybody. OK. So you'll feel important, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So what I want you to do is, um, what's a common symptom of MS that everybody's been asking about throughout this, especially at the end of the yoga? Yeah class balance okay so what I want you to do is stand with your feet touching each other and look straight forward do you feel a little bit off balance a little bit okay close your eyes a little more so now look up and now close your eyes I'm not gonna let you fall can you guys see him swaying okay that's what it feels like for people with MS to just stand there and carry on a conversation while someone's trying to talk to you and they're thinking gosh I'm gonna fall this way I'm gonna fall that way this is gonna happen what'd you say and then they say it and then it's like wait I don't remember what'd you say well it's good to if you don't remember something at least you learned it once right that's the way I look at things I forget things all the time I get to relearn them so now what I want you to do is can you stand on one leg okay now do that with your eyes closed Okay. okay, so that was you had MS for a minute, all right? Now imagine that, uh, see, it's painful too. <laughs> Who said there was no pain with MS? My first doctor told me that. Okay. I said, yeah, I punched him in the mouth. I said, now you got pain from MS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but standing on one leg is great if you can do it. If you can stand on one leg and close your eyes, even better. But you're you're practicing something that you're probably going to go to your doctor's office and say, hey, look, I can balance. And it's because you're practicing. Practice will help you balance. So if you want to learn how to balance better, practice it. But the, the important thing is stability. Um, you can get done. You, you, you got the idea, though, right? Did you guys understand what he was doing? I want another volunteer. Actually, I want two volunteers. I don't care if you have MS or not. I don't discriminate. <laughs> except the other guy. So two people, come on up. Uh, come this way, this way. That's one. If I do this, it's two. 
Come on, there's got to be one other person come up. up. You, you're going the wrong way. I'm just kidding. You can make it that way. I thought you said to use the stairs. Yeah. Come on up. Come up here. Do you guys exercise? I do. How often? Every day. Okay, good answer. What about you? Uh, about four times a week. Four times. Hey, do you, I got the two best people to test up here. Um, one of you, actually, one of you sit here, and one of you stand over there. How many of you guys have seen my balloon trick? Well, you're not going to see it right now, but I do have a balloon. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about um, reflexes and stretching and some stuff, but I want you to put your hand out and close your eyes. Just <laughs> hand palm all the way up, palm up, eyes closed. Okay. That's a stretch reflex. I didn't tell you to do that. Your body just did that, and, right? That's one of the stretch reflexes. You can put your hand down. Uh, stretching is important with MS. Do you stretch? How many people stretch first thing in the day? Right when you get out of bed. Well, don't do that anymore because you're going to hurt yourself. Stretching, it's extremely important that you warm up first. A warm up can include a walk, a ride, and a bike. It could in include just a bunch of movement, or it could include a warm shower. You can have local. Um, warm up where you put like a warm towel around your leg and do something like that. But there's different types of stretches. Um, the, the basic stretches are ones where you're just uh, reaching for something and holding it, static stretch. And then there's stretches with movement. The most important types of stretching are stretches that you get while you're actively doing an exercise in the full range of motion because that increases your range of motion functionally. You guys on with me there? Take this. Now, I'll let you do this too, just so you see. Put your hand out. I don't want to make you feel like you're not being included. Whoa, didn't tell you that it was three pounds heavier than that one, did I? Sorry. I can um, tell. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do is you stand over there, take this, face the crowd. Are you okay with being video recorded? I didn't ask you before, I'm sorry. Okay. Rewind. No. Yeah, yes or no? Yes. Okay, you too? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay, say it that way. Yes. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to pick that up as high as you can above your head. Now throw it as hard as you can down there. How'd that feel? Empowering. Yeah, you see? That, that's good. No. Now, if you were to pick that up and do it 10 times, you not only would be getting some frustrations out, but you'd be doing deadlifts. Okay. With, with, with a load. With so a load. that's good. Exactly. And if you're seated, throw that at the ground as hard as you can. Two hands. Can you do two hands? With two hands? Yeah. So you're getting the same thing out of it as she did for the most part without your feet as your ground base of support. It's so important to do your exercises with your feet on the ground with load. That way you will recruit more bone growth. Without that, you won't. So it's very important, especially with, with uh, being that a lot of you said you think more about doing than doing, right? Do more than think. You can think it through for a minute, but it takes a long time to get whatever you're going to get done, done. Um, hold on to that again. One of the biggest things about people with MS and core strength and balance and stability is it's lacking, right? Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay, one of the things that happens with, I'm not going to speak about meds, but there's certain meds that allow people to do certain things, and if they do them and they haven't been doing them for a long time, such as walking or um, just moving more, all of a sudden they realize their core is weak and they're walking faster than their core can maintain their posture. So core exercises are the core of your workout. They really, you really want to make your core strong and then work peripherally. So what I want you to do is, here, give me this back. Just play catch with her. Throw it to the side a little bit. You guys are faking MS. <laughs> okay, so what she's doing is she's actually working her core because if she wasn't, she'd fall out of her seat. 
pretty simple. You know, this is just a bouncy ball. This is a $1 piece of exercise equipment. How many people buy exercise equipment that looks easy to use because it looks easy to use? At 3 o'clock in the morning, you buy it, right? <laughs> Don't buy it unless you're going to use it at 3 o'clock in the morning. And if you think you're getting a piece of equipment that is easier to use than the next piece of equipment, it's probably doing a little bit less too. Or you're just watching the model who's never used the equipment before show how the equipment works and sell the equipment to you. The model's not coming with the piece of equipment, trust me. Um, okay, now let me take this. Now the balloon trick. So the next thing I was going to do is work with a cone. This is one of those faulty balloons. Do you have any more? Balloons? I don't know. I don't know. Why did you give me a faulty balloon? I'm just kidding. It happens. All right. So when it comes to doing exercises with stuff like a medicine ball, there's medicine balls like this. There's big ones. I've got some that are. Um, uh, oh wait, I think I see a balloon coming. I see a balloon coming. But medicine ball, this is a 10 pound medicine ball, feel it? Wow. Now throw it at me. Like hurt me. Hurt me? Like knock me over with it. get up. Well then, hey, get up, even better. She just did a squat too. Oh, are you okay? Yep. Throw it at me, right in my chest. At your chest? Stand to the side, yeah. Put your hands down. She's trying to kill me. It's okay though. I'm not dying that easy. You all right? So that was, you probably had more fun doing that than you did throwing it at the ground, right? Yeah. Why? You wanted to hurt me, didn't you? What did I do to you? So all these different modalities of exercise fill your toolbox, what I call your toolbox, your exercise toolbox. The simple things, the tough things, the simple things lead to the tougher things. This is something, here, can you take, can you, can you bring it to me here? So you just did a stand with a 10 pound ball. Pretty good. I can tell you work out. You can go back down there. I appreciate your help. Okay. That was great. And so here, you want to feel what a 10 pound ball feels like? Do you want to throw it at me? Throw it? Yeah, throw it at me. Ah. <laughs> All right, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to need another volunteer. Um, are you okay with being recorded? Yes. Are you okay? Is that your daughter? Yes. Are you okay with your daughter being recorded? Yes. Do you like balloons? Do you like pink balloons? Yeah. All right. This is going to be yours unless it pops. And it's your mom's, okay? <laughs> okay, have a seat. You stand. You're going to be, you're going to be my, uh, my partner here. Here, let me see that. You don't want to throw this at her. No. Okay. If she throws that at you, I'll catch it. Don't worry. So I want you to just throw that to your mom. Okay, so seated, um, come off the chair a little bit so that, there you go. Now throw it back. Now throw it back. Throw it to the, there you go. So you see what she just did was she caught the balloon and she came back forward, which is the same thing as doing a crunch. There's nothing supporting her from behind her. She's good at catching. She is. We do this at home all the time. All right. Did you know you're a core specialist? All right. Yeah. So doing stuff like this is great, but now come here. I want you to stand right there. Take this. Now, um, just stand up once. Now sit back down. Okay, I just want to make sure you could do that. Okay, you look at me and you hit the balloon over here. You react and catch it. Just say, go. No, you're not gonna stand up. Come on, stand up. Oh, stand up. All right, let's do. Let's try this one more time. All right. So here, have a seat. She's gonna hit it from behind you this way. So you hit it to me, toward to here, just hit it. Here, just come up and get it. So doing something like this with a partner, what it would look like is here. So have a seat. Now what I want you to do is just react and don't look at the screen because that's cheating. <laughs> now get behind me. Now you do it. So I have people when there's, there's, when there's two people working together, I'll have them do something like this. So what it is is hand-eye coordination. You're working hand-eye coordination. You're also doing a get up and go. 
So if you, can, if you can get up, great, but if you can't go anywhere, not so great. So that's helping that. It's helping your acceleration, hand-eye coordination, and it's kind of fun, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this to you. You take it, it's a special pink balloon that thousands of people saw you with. All over the place, thousands. So now you're famous for that pink balloon. Thank you for, very much for coming up and helping. Thank you. You go this way. Take good care of that balloon. Anybody ever use a sandbag? Sand bell is what it's called. Um, it's like a medicine ball, but it's in a disc shape. It's easier to grip for some. Some people it's not. And if you drop it, it's not as bad. It doesn't hurt if, you, if it lands on your foot or something. Hopefully it doesn't land on your foot. Maybe someone else's, I don't know, but it won't hurt them. And you can do all kinds of stuff with these. I like throwing them. You can do the same thing you can do with a dumbbell, a press. On your back you can do stuff. A great exercise to do is just sitting on here. Now you can do the same thing by sitting on a chair unsupported and doing a single arm lift. You know what this is doing? Cool. Exactly. Because I'm not falling over this way, this side's holding me up. You ever see somebody that's walking like this and is always walking like that? Was it me? <laughs> um, that means that this side is weaker because it's not strong enough to do this. So if I saw someone doing that, I'd incorporate that into the workout where I'd say, okay, here, just carry this around for a while with this arm, and all of a sudden, equal it out because the other side of the body is getting work. A lot of women have that issue because they carry a purse on one side their whole life, MS or not. So if they're carrying a purse their whole time, you got a strong side that's this side keeping this up. This side becomes weak. Switch sides. Always, you know, reverse it. That way people, uh, they won't say, hey, there's a person with the purse in the left hand again. Doesn't really happen, does it? Although I said that to you once, didn't I? Okay. Bands, how many of you used bands before? I want another volunteer. Someone who has two hands to use or I'd call up Stuart because you guys all know Stuart has a bad hand. Oh, I thought she was gonna volunteer. Who else can I go? All right, come on. We plan this. Okay. You ever done this before? <laughs> she taught me how to do these. Right. Okay. First, let's actually, first we'll do it standing because the other ones we started out doing seated. So stand with your legs shoulder width apart, extend your arms, no, no, extend. Okay. And if you let go, then all, all the pieces are going to fall apart, they're going to be like Humpty Dumpty. Okay, just pull. Okay, what is she working? Where? Where in her core is she working? Abs? All right. If her abs are working right now, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> I mean, her abs are working, but they're not firing. Her lower back, because, just hold on to it. No, no, don't walk though, hold. You see what's happening? If I'm pulling, what's keeping her upright is her lower back. Now, if I was to come on the other side of her, and that's a really good lower back exercise, just holding something like that. So right now, you don't have to, you don't have to do the press. If you, if you want, you can, but um, now what's working? Ah, thanks. So if her abs weren't working, she'd fall backwards. So this is basically a bench press in a functional modality that, you can, that has a carryover effect in day, daily life. Now, how, now let me get a chair and we're gonna show them in a chair. Same thing can be done in a seat. Have a seat. Now I'm gonna do it just a little bit different just to change it up, but just to use one arm. Okay, so now, now, now do the pull, now, now do a row. So she's working her arms, she's working her upper back. Get your hand off your knee, thanks. 
Okay, so now what she's doing is she's working her rotational muscles absent rotation because by pulling one side, she's resisting that one side, so she's using the same muscles that would use to rotate to stay still. And it didn't really cross your mind that that's what you're doing, right? But you didn't get flipped around. So these are the types of things that you can do at home and they're very inexpensive. Stuff like this, stuff like bands, balls, um, cones, all these different things um, are very, very helpful. These bands can be secured in a doorway so you don't have to have someone else help you. You're not done. How <laughs> you don't find out? All right, so. Here's an exercise that I'm going to show you that's, uh, let's say it's a deadlift. It's a modified deadlift or a reach. Right? What I'm working is my hamstrings, glutes, lower back. What's the strongest, largest muscle in your body? Glutes. Yeah, you're all sitting on them right now. That's why the back of your legs and your glutes and your hamstrings and stuff need to be stretched more so than the front of your legs because you're seated in this position, hip flex at 90 degrees, knee flex at 90 degrees, short muscle, short muscle, and you're um, basically getting tight, sitting there all the time. How many people sit at work for about two hours working on a computer or at home sitting down playing on your phone? Yeah? You guys are dehydrated. Because if not, you would have had to go to the restroom. So you wouldn't have been sitting there all that time. So drink water. That's a good way to get up and move and do stuff. Because if you drink enough water, you're going to have to move. Um, so now what I want you to do from a seated position is reach for that. And then come all the way up. So she's working her glutes and her lower back. There you go. So can you feel it? Yes. So if you're seated and you say you can't exercise because you're seated, you can exercise. Uh, some of the other ones that we did was, actually, let's take this. Uh, throw with one arm. Push, throw it to me. Core again. Can you feel the core working? Mm -hmm. Can you guys see that? Do you guys understand how the core works? So if you have somebody that's seated, put your hands out like this. And I was just do this, press against it. Right now, she's using her core tremendously. She can feel it a lot, right? Now do it the other way so you don't walk in circles when we're done. OK. Now one arm press. Just hold it. Press. Same thing as with like the band. All core, right? Seated. These are things that can be done seated. We're going to come up with some videos, hopefully, to show you all the different uh, types of exercises that I'm showing here in a much longer version. But that way, you guys can develop what kind of a program fits you best. And it can be done at home. And it doesn't have to be done at the gym, but thank you very much. You can get down. But if you do choose to use, do these things at the gym, don't worry about going to a gym. How many people in here are worried about going to a gym because you have MS? What are you worried about? You worried about other people seeing you? You weren't meant to be. You weren't meant to be f to fit in. You're meant to stand out. And if you go to a gym, you're going to stand out if you don't have as much ability as other people, and you're doing the same amount of work as them. It, it really goes a long way. If somebody sees you at the gym doing something, that's motivation for you and for them. But chances are, if someone's staring at you at the gym, they're not really staring at you. People are too vain in the gym to be staring at you. There's a mirror behind you. <laughs> so don't be worried. Don't feel like it's the world and the whole gym against you. It's the whole gym against themselves. That's what people go to the gym for, to get better. And if you want to measure your success in the gym, it should be done outside the gym. What you do in the gym should be able to be noticed outside the gym, whether it's the way you look or whether it's the way you move. So I'm out of time, but I'm not out of time for questions. So who's got a question? Wait, first let's thank Jeff. Oh. And I'll tell you, Two weeks ago was my 20 year anniversary with MS. I've kept it behind me for a long time. It's fast, but not as fast as I am. <laughs> All right, first question is gonna be over here. Oh, I was just wondering about the ball. I've never, I mean, the bag, the, the sandbag. I've never seen that before. These? Yeah. I'll tell you what, here, feel it. 
good. Ready? Over your head. Huh? <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was my disappearing act. All right, you want to tell where she could get it? Um, you, you can look, they're called Sand Bell. Google it. Sand Bell, they're distributed by a lot of different okay. places. Um, but they're Sand Bell. Like dumbbell, but Sand Bell. But dumbbells, do you guys know where dumbbell came from? The, the word dumbbell? There's two B's in it because it's a dumb bell. The inside of the bell is taken out, that's where they came up with the name for dumbbell. It's not a stupid bell, it's just quiet. Question down there? You got a question down there? Anybody have a question on that side? If not, I got plenty here. Okay, let's go here. Yes, um, if your muscles have atrophied for, because of the disease and so forth, can you bring it all back by just going to the gym? No, you have to go to the gym and do some work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can Questions. build muscle and have MS at the same time. But you cannot build muscle and have MS at the same time without working the muscles. And that's the biggest problem is people underdo it because they're afraid of overdoing it. And if you're so afraid of overdoing it that you underdo it so much that you don't do it at all, you're back at zero. So exercise alone is the only thing that's going to make your muscle stronger. Like that's it. Exercise. So, if you so, take steroids, the kind that make you strong and you don't exercise, you won't get strong. So once you have like atrophy. Atrophy? Yeah. Then you want hypertrophy, which is the opposite of atrophy. Hypertrophy is building of muscle tissue. So, so if your atrophy uh, is stemming from Ms. something that's unable to work, um, you, you go to a physical therapist and they fix you know, the way you do things. Or you can start doing things different ways or um, talk to a personal trainer or somebody. But what type of muscle are you talking about when you're speaking of atrophy? Oh, like just this? being able to walk. I mean, just like your leg strength, walking, getting tired walking. And uh, what I really like to do for people who do have neurological fatigue is what I call it. A neurological fatigue would be someone that's walking for a long period of time and eventually turns into the, uh, the zombie walk, you know, where the leg just yeah. stops working. That's someone who did not learn how to rest properly. Well, I'm talking about, I'm, not, you, huh? I'm talking about not walking a long time, but just, you know, walking in general. Well, if you, what I'm saying is if you walk, then you take a break then you can walk longer. Nerves do um, respond to rest. So when, what I see is the same thing. I'm just gonna give you an example. It's the same thing as if you were talking about walking. If someone's doing this, I've got people that can do a, a shoulder press with a eight pound weight, let's say. And on rep number eight, all of a sudden it looks like this. You know what that means number nine's gonna look like? I'm not gonna let them do it. I'm gonna tell them to rest for a few minutes then go back to doing that, and then they get their uh, nerve function back. And it talks to the muscle, the muscle does the action, and, and there you go. Same thing goes when you're walking. If you can only walk a, a block before your legs tire out, take a break in the shade, then walk again. Next question. Over here. Hello. Okay. First off, go Knowles. And I was wondering what your thoughts are about BCAAs for a supplement after or during a workout. Um, it's, I, you know, when it comes to supplementation, everybody's different and everybody's chemical and body makeup is different. So I can't give you a definitive answer. It's, it'd be like a doctor trying to um, sub, uh, prescribe somebody a medicine that's dose uh, you know, sensitive by talking to them on the phone. So. Look, look into it a little bit and see and see how your numbers are and everything. But you're welcome. Question here. My form of exercise is I walk in the pool. I like walk like two laps and then take a rest. How many of them would you say is a good number to do? Number of laps, I mean. Um, back to what I said to her. <laughs> it's if you're if you're able to do three laps and you do two laps, then you're only going to be able to two. You're only going to be able to do two laps uh, eventually. If you don't do what your ability allows you to do, you're under doing it and you're not gonna, um, how, do you know how do you know? By doing. You gotta, you gotta find where your edge is, what your limits are. Your limits are your own limits. So when you get to that limit and you can't do it anymore, you've reached the end point. So you wanna go just before that, that area. 
You want to extend that, though, by working out. That can lengthen, and then you can do more, and then that's how you build. Uh, specific adaptations to impose demands are how the body responds to exercise. So based on the demands that you put on your body, that's what the results you're going to get are going to be based on. I think I uh, tend to push myself more than I should, and so you're saying that I should stop before why do you say that you do it more than you should? What, what's, your, what's the outcome? Because when you were going, that person is doing nine, nine, and then, well, that is, that is me. I feel great, and so I push myself, and when I start feeling like I am doing horrible, I still continue. Well, if you can't do an exercise with the right form, you should not be doing the exercise. You're setting yourself up for injury. That's what's happening. It doesn't mean that you can't do a different exercise that's not in a body part that's fatigued while that body part's uh, resting. So the, the only exercise that I do is um, I jog in a pool. I do this every day for an hour. And that's the only exercise that I can do. Um, can you, how are your arms? Well, arms are good. Okay, uh, I got an idea. Why okay. don't you jog in the pool? When yeah. you tire out, grab the outside of the pool and do walks around the pool with your arms, and then go back, then go back to jogging. Your legs will be rested. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, Mike, I have a question. How do you feel about leg weights and how do you determine, uh, wa I'm walking with leg weights, and how do you determine what's the best weight for you to use? I don't see, who's asking the question? Thank you. Okay, leg weights, you mean like the ankle weights, like those stuff? Okay, you take someone with MS. Are you an MS patient? No. Okay, let's, I'm gonna solve this with the help of the crowd. How many people who have MS have trouble walking because your legs feel heavy? How would that be if you put extra weight on your legs? It's not the best idea because you're mixing anaerobic activity with aerobic activity and you want to be able to sustain the aerobic activity which is the walking and you don't want to make it anaerobic by by adding weight to it and making it to um you know to where you fail which is a good thing it's okay to fail in an exercise that just means that you've got to the last rep that do you guys understand that make sense yeah. okay question front left wheelchair, what would right, you suggest whatever. I said, I'm in a wheelchair. What would you suggest? Everything that I showed you that I was doing with people seated. There's, I didn't give an exercise out that was not given standing and seated. So that way, people like you who are in a wheelchair can participate and do the things like that. So um, you're welcome. And you can do crunches in a wheelchair. You know, just put your arms here, lean back, come forward until you're no longer getting a resistance from gravity. So when you're sitting forward to here, just don't do this because then you're going too far and gravity is not helping the exercise anymore. How many people in here do squats? How many people in here cannot do squats? Keep your hands up. How many people that cannot do squats and have their hands raised are going to get out of their chair to leave you today? <laughs> Put your hands down if you can do squats. Wow, look at that. If you're able to get up out of a chair, even with assistance, you're able to do squats. A squat does not mean you have to get down to here and up. That's a full squat. Uh, it could just mean you're doing something like this, and if that's too difficult, Something like this. That might be your form of a squat. And if you do that enough, you might be able to reduce the height a little bit by an inch and an inch and an inch and before you know it, you're doing a full squat. And if not, you still have the modified squat to do. Any other I questions? Got a, I got a minute and 14 seconds for the last question. Make any, it a good one. Any questions? Question. Come on. No question. I got a question. Did everybody enjoy Jeff? Thank you. Thank you. So, Jeff is in a lot of the, first off, thank you, Jeff. That was great. So, Jeff is in a lot of the videos that we have made, and everything is, is accessible to you through our YouTube channel. 
So if you've never been to our YouTube channel, you just go to the website, and there are buttons there for you to click on to get to it. All right, but, and then if you want to find Jeff real quick, just type in his name and, or type in exercise, and like everything that comes up about exercise will be there because Jeff Free or Jeff was the one that did this. So again, I want to thank Jeff for everything he's doing because he is making a difference.